Good afternoon, happy Sunday. This is a practice to restore balance um, and bring yourself back to yourself. So if you don't know where that is, <laughs> or you're in a busy period like August is where we're pushing forward, this practice is for you. Um, there will be no music today, just the sound of the air condition and any activities in the Altulsi household. And I appreciate you being here. We're going to continue our work with nonviolent communication and practicing the words that and the actions that are beneficial for everyone, including ourselves. Um, and this is a great opportunity to do that. As you meet resistance, please remember that resistance is your mind's way of diverting its attention from the present moment. And there's a lot of information in that. And so I encourage you after this practice and the practices in August, maybe to consider keeping a journal um, of your practices. I like to do this and um, this is really a personal practice for me. Um, this is my busy time of year. So we'll be working on areas that crop up to me just naturally from working long hours and um, balancing, playing a balancing act of all my roles and identities. So um, I hope that this is beneficial for you, and I invite you to revisit it at any time. Please come to a seated position and stack the vertebrae, close your eyes, tuck your chin slightly, elongate through the, nose, uh, the neck, and begin breathing in through the nose. <clears throat> As you bring your awareness inside, to the tip of the nose and as the breath enters and exits gently. Become aware of the length of your inhale and the corresponding exhale. And bring some evenness to its flow. Just being aware of the sensation on the tip of your nose. And from that space, with the eyes open or closed, let's begin little neck circles. Still bringing that awareness to the tip of the nose and even breaths. And as the breath is even, make the circle even. And begin your flow to the other side, rotating the neck in another direction. Again, as we do this, listening to the cues our body gives us, the thoughts that arise, and then bringing our attention back to the tip of the nose an inner sight, an awareness, and an evenness to the breath. And the corresponding movement of the circle. Watching how it can seamlessly flow around and around with no beginning or ending point. But as the chin comes to the chest, rest the chin on the chest, take a deep breath in with the eyes closed. And as you exhale, gently lift the head up with the hand, or you can bring it up and open the eyes. Bring the hands together, rub them together, create a little energy. The first thing I like to do to bring myself into the present moment is define my place in space. So <laughs> if I'm in a location and I can't 
define the exact direction that I'm in. I try to figure that out. And if not, I create a space that's safe based on that. So my connection is to the earth and to the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. And I've aligned my map at home with that. So a lot of times I will trace backwards all the way to my house, like from school, to determine the location or from my childhood home, which is nearby. These are all things I do because I've lived here a long time. <laughs> so currently I'm facing north, basically north, and that gives me a good route. So as we go through the warm-up exercise, I want you to focus your attention on what it means to be a physical presence in the earth and where the earth is in relationship to you. I find this a useful tool as I work through the movements to warm up my body and get my body in alignment for the more subtle senses. <laughs> Bringing the hands to the heart center, we're going to draw three breaths in, close the eyes, focusing now out through the third eye, drawing an even breath in. Retaining the breath at the top and exhaling it out. After a moment of retention at the bottom of the breath, let's do that again. And one last time, inhale. And exhale hands come to the, the knees, either palms up or palms down. You can then circle the thumb and index finger if you want that. I find that very grounding. It feels like a good place to go for me always. It's a practice place and a receiving place. Notice all the places that you touch the earth. So that it may be your shins or your feet or your rear or part of your foot. Notice all the places that you feel earth in your present body including your body. So consider the concept of your body is earth and made of earth. And just do a mental scan of those places and hold those as you breathe three more times. Inhaling, slight pause at the top, exhaling and a slight pause at the bottom. Notice the changes in each of those four places or the location from which you are present. As you take your third or fourth breath in, blink your eyes open and transition onto your hands and knees. We'll be doing gentle cat cows, making that same connection to the earth while I speak a little bit about our body <laughs> and our earth. So after practicing for a bit, I found that in the practice of nonviolent communication and practicing it with oneself or through a yoga practice, a grounding practice, Grounding is the first thing I go to. So if that's all you have time for in a day, we can each do this without movement through our breath. So finding the spots on the floor that your hands are on, and I like to feel my whole shin and the top of my foot on the floor, and then I know that I am a person today that is able to do that, and some days I am not a person that can do that, and so that's okay. Whatever is touching the earth, make it solid and feel secure. And from there begin cat and cow. By inhaling, you're going to draw the head gently towards the tailbone and feel your earth here. There should be no pain, maybe tightness, maybe a little 
discomfort in that you haven't moved this way, no full range of motion, but no pain. And then exhale and drop the tailbone towards the nose and the nose towards the tailbone. Draw the belly button up and feel what it feels like to be a grounded, physical, earthly human being right here. And then inhale to come to a neutral position. Using that same breath, we're going to move through inhaling and exhaling. And again, it's your exploration. So as you begin to feel where you can't get that breath to stay or to stick or to move through, consider adjusting your earth. Make adjustments where you feel it in your body so that maybe you can take the breath there and feel grounded in that range of motion. And maybe as you move through this grounding exercise and this warm up, this practice, maybe you don't feel anything at all and that is completely okay too because it's everyone's unique experience here and it's an opportunity to explore and practice being kind to ourselves and getting to know ourselves to allow whatever needs to take place from a practice to take place. Return to yourself, healing so you can return to your most natural state, which I hope is bliss and love <laughs> for everyone, including myself. And then lengthening out, we're gonna come down onto our back. So I'm starting with the subtle parts of earth and moving into the best way. If you are finding that you are having trouble grounding, begin your day on your back with your knees up to your chest in a comfortable position, trying to build that flexibility that you can flatten your back. Sometimes it helps to have a bolster underneath. Sometimes I have to get a little higher and tuck my pelvis and I need an assistance. Find your earth here. What is comfortable? and equanimitous on your body in this position. And see if you can activate a little bit of the arms and pull the knees towards the chest a little bit more and that will help activate the hips which play a very important part in our earth as they collect our energy, our fears and our worry and our emotional baggage that we can't let go. Sometimes I'm knowing, so I'm going to really work on that today, grounding that and breathing here, those breaths, bringing the attention to the third eye. Since we are a physical human being and the mo normative ability of hearing is present, we will listen to the sounds around us, learning and practicing how to disconnect to things that are not our preference, like band saws and lawn mowers, just to be present with the moment and feel the earth and where we are. And now feel all the, the imprint of your body on the earth and place the feet upon the earth. Take the hands and reach them down towards the ankles and go ahead and bring the feet as close to your rear as you can. We're gonna to begin to inhale up and exhale down. And as we inhale up, we're not lifting to the full extent. We're just getting um, uh, air moving through. So. So do what you need to do. It could be very little. You might be working on just bringing, just pushing into your feet, and that's okay. 
we want to bring enough energy into our body that we start to bring some of this breath up into our belly and into our chest. So we're just going to inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Relax the tongue. Relax the neck and shoulders. We're doing this movement slow enough to get a complete down and a place to hold, even though it's not at our pinnacle, we're kind of moving in between the highest that we can be and the flattest we could possibly be while we breathe inhale and exhale. Bringing the attention to the third eye. And the breath. Finding our earth. but keeping it equal among all parts of our bodies. So feel the weight shift from the tailbone the, on the ground and the lower back. Keep the feet and the arms, maybe the backs of the shoulders, a little bit of the back of the head, but nothing intense or overwhelming. And if you note that there's one area you're feeling the earth more intensely, try to Move that energy so each part of your body on the earth is doing an equal amount of work or making contact in the same way. And remember, it's only practice, so it's only practice. Inhaling up, exhaling down. You may find that your range of motion is getting bigger, that's okay too. As you warm up, this is a warm up exercise, so you will find range of motion improvements. And then inhale up and hold, not the biggest amount, but just somewhere where you can hang out and maybe wish your rear end side to side. If you're on the ground, you could just barely tilt a little bit. Just wiggle the hips a little bit and feel the stability that your feet give you. Feel the stability that the earth gives you in this posture to move your hips freely. And if you're feeling pain in this movement, then you know that that's an area that needs to have some TLC, so gently lower down. Tuck in through the pelvis, boat, pelvis, tuck your chin up, and then tuck your knees as close as you can get to your body. Wrap your hands around the knees if you can. It can look not even close to this, and that's okay. Just tuck into the smallest ball you can, tuck your head, and take some long deep breaths in here. You need to place your head down, do that. If you need to open your knees, do that. Try to relax the shoulders away from the ears. This is a challenging position, so adjust how you need to and keep the breath flowing evenly. Open the ears to the new sounds you hear around you. Feeling the earth, where your body's making contact. And of course, you're feeling the challenge of staying in the air. And your physical body has to put you there keep you in the air so you can feel that resistance of staying above the ground and the challenge of it to so exhale release out stretch out the legs and take a quick shavasana here feel the earth and then feel that same air When you're ready, move to one side, push yourself all the way up. And we're going to come into a seated exercise for um, 
<laughs> to move on. And this is the part of the practice that I am working on. So to combat a busy August and a uh, need to um, rest my body physically um, while I'm at my busiest point in the year, I've come up with some uh, additions from July's practice on balance and June's practice in nonviolent communication. And they're just improvisational. They're how I find balance before I go into a work day when I practice in the morning. And I thought they would be useful to bring into August. It would be useful for me to practice them in front of someone <laughs> to keep me on task and to keep me focused on the best person and the best good that I can do for, in my career, in my job, in my life, with my family and loved ones and the people that I teach. And I think this is a handy tool just in general. And um, it came from a very hard and challenging spot prior to COVID and when I had to just hold the moment for what it was and I couldn't do anything at all. In fact, I was completely helpless and yet I was needed. And when there isn't anything you can do but hold the moment, you need to find presence within yourself so that you can do the things that have to be done, regardless of whether you want to do them or not or whether you think you're capable of. So we're going to practice a breathing exercise that relates to the air. And so I know we heard sound in the air and I heard the birds singing. And when I heard the birds singing, that brought the earth to me when I was laying on my back and perhaps if this is on YouTube, you want, we'll back up and maybe I can put the, the time that the birds were singing in the video. But the point is, is picking each moment to figure out what can you connect to that will bring you into balance so that you can do what you have to do, <laughs> which is goodwill towards others when they need you <laughs> and towards yourself. So we're going to breathe and become the air. And this takes practice because almost the moment you perceive that you're part of the air, you, you lose it. And so rather than negating my thoughts when I meditate, and that's why I use a journal, I try to direct my thoughts, which is a type of yoga. It's focusing the mind and bringing attention to your thought patterns and your past habits that are created through that thought process. And I write them down so that I can revisit them and plan them for another day. And then I will often revisit that. So this breath came out of that. So I hope that it's helpful for you. And we're going to go back to focusing on the tip of our nose as we inhale and exhale. But we're going to incorporate the alternate nostril breathing only through the left side. And what I want you to try to perceive, or what I'm going to attempt to perceive, is that there is no differentiation between my physical body in the air that I'm taking in and the air that I'm letting out. Or I'm going to see if there is a difference between that as it relates to this experiential exploration. So those are my questions that I'm asking as I meditate, but I'm focusing only on those questions. I'm directing where my mind is going to go and experiencing what is my body. And just, there's no right or wrong answer because we're all gonna experience it in a different way. And the practice of pranayama, of breath work, helps cultivate an ability or a skill to do that while you're doing the pranayama, I believe. Um, I could be wrong, but for me. <laughs> and that brings a balance. And the idea that sound in the air travels and that this air is no different than your air except for what we do to pollute it in various locations is an amazing concept to me of our connectivity far away. So without further ado, I'm going to close your eyes and um, I'm going to use the beautiful mudra of my right hand, which is opposite of you. My left thumb is going to cover my right nose. The two middle fingers are going to go at my third eye. 
and my ring finger is going to plug the left nostril, so the thumb right opposite me, and then I'm going to make a beautiful mudra because this feels like a beautiful mudra in dance. And that beautiful mudra requires some flexibility in your fingers. So there are other ways to do it. So before we go into the mudra, we're just going to stretch our fingers a little bit. So spread your fingers out and bend your wrists. The elbows are soft. And the fingers are spread, but not too much. And then you're just going to take your thumb and touch the pinky, the ring finger, the middle finger, the index finger. Hold there for a moment. Now stretch the fingers out. And then release the hands and shake them out. Now take the hands down and flex them down. Again, the elbows are soft. And we're going to go backwards. We're going to take the thumb and we're going to touch the index finger, the middle finger, the ring finger, and the pinky, and hold the pinky finger. And then release it out and shake it out. All right. So we're going to use the alternate nostril breathing and we're going to perceive the air. I ask this that you go, um, I direct my attention towards the tip of my nose because I feel like that's the point at which, or at least I've read, that that's the, you know, it, the, in theory it makes sense, comes out, you know, your, your breath will like meet somewhere here and there's all these magic angles and everything. So I direct it that way because it's a more of a <laughs> subtle energy that you have to notice that you may never notice um, and then I like to picture what it looks like geometrically, but, um, you know, there are pictures of it too, so I don't know which one came first, the one in my head or the one that I saw and read. But I like to play with that when I'm breathing, and why it's beneficial is that that breath is going to bring us into balance, if it hasn't already. So, <laughs> without further ado, go ahead and take your position. No thumb on the nose, just close the eyes. Find your earth and begin to breathe in and out through the nose gently. There's a little pause at the top and a little pause at the bottom. Taking your mind down to the tip of the nose, not where the two fingers are touching the third eye. learning how to shift that focus from one point to the other through the breath. And then we're going to plug the left nostril with the ring finger of the right hand, or you could do it vice versa. And begin to breathe. Same breath. Finding your earth. Making subtle adjustments. Lightening up on the finger, maybe releasing the shoulder, maybe relaxing the left hand. 